you think? This was a little girl from an orphanage. Extraordinary. Gabrielle Chanel was the most enigmatic and mysterious of women. I'd always wanted to write about her ever since I first discovered her as a, as a young woman. I first went to the house of Chanel in 1997. One gets some sense of who she really was inside her private apartment. And it was when I stepped into that private space, I began to have some sense of the enigma, the mystery that is Coco Chanel. And there, everybody came from, from Picasso to Diaghilev to Stravinsky to Nijinsky. They all came to pay court to Coco Chanel. A number of books have already been written about Coco Chanel, as you would expect. But as a biographer, I was given this extraordinary access. I was allowed not only into the apartment and into the Chanel archives, but also I was allowed to write in the apartment. The extraordinary thing about sitting in that apartment was that I was allowed to be there very late at, at night. And as the house of Chanel empties, it gets quieter and the shadows grow. There's a sort of ghostly presence there. You feel that if you turned around fast enough, you might even see her reflected in, in the mirror. People tend to associate Chanel with light, with the diamonds, with the pearls, with all the glitter of fashion, but there was a darkness at her heart as well. And to understand that, you have to go back to the very, very beginning, to a little place called Aubazine in central France. I went there to the monastery, and this was the place that was becoming a home to a young girl who had just lost her mother and been abandoned by her father. One of the most startling things about Aubazine is that there's no figurative stained glass, but there in these windows is a clearly recognizable origin, I think, of the double C logo. I mean, it seems almost sacrilegious for a, a British writer to write a book about Chanel because she is the most famous French woman in the world, really. But I realised that Chanel has intriguing links with the British that have never been written about before. She came to, to England because of the Duke of Westminster, who she met at the end of 1923. And there are wonderful pictures, which I discovered in private archives, of Chanel entertaining the Duke of Westminster's hostess and mistress, um, totally accepted by British society in the late 1920s, surrounded by duchesses and ladies and absolutely every grand person you could think of. One of the Duke of Westminster's closest friends from youth was Winston Churchill. And it was through the Duke of Westminster that Chanel met Churchill and became friends with him. This was a friendship that was to be absolutely crucial during the Second World War. There's been a huge amount of speculation about Chanel and her activities in occupied Paris during the Second World War. Some people may have heard that she had a relationship with a German officer. But what I discovered in the course of researching my book, and I spent a lot of time in military archives, in police archives, in the Churchill archives, and in security service archives, was that the truth was far, far, far more complicated. This picture was taken in 1938, and it shows her at her dressing table at the Ritz, because although she lived in this very opulent apartment above the boutique. She slept at the Ritz. Growing old is not easy for anybody, but for Chanel, who had been such a great beauty, she was her own best model, her own best advertisement. She nevertheless managed to face herself in the mirror every night at the Ritz. She had nightmares, she slept, walked, but she remained powerfully heroic she continued to work and to design until the day she died.